Okay. Today, I'm going to talk about a rapture dream that I had that was short and to me at the time was insignificant. Hence, that's why I didn't put it out earlier or didn't say anything about it. But um, I think God was testing me to see if things that seem small and in insignificant and confusing to me, would I have enough faith to put it out so that somebody else can get closer to the kingdom or get entrance into the kingdom? So go to sleep. Dream starts. Hotel conference room. So imagine being in a hotel conference room. We in a hotel conference room. There's about 40 to 50 people sitting down in these seats, right? These 40 to 50 people, according to the dream I was having, did not believe in the rapture. They did not believe in the rapture at all. So what I was doing in the dream was I was preparing them for the seven year tribulation. So I had guns on the table. I had weapons, knives, hand warmers, batteries, camping gear, those big old uh, hiking backpacks um, that you can put all the stuff in had the boots and everything. And so what happened was I told the people, I said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do like a, a test run um, or a mock run, a, a, a test, you know, we're going to practice so we can prepare. We're going to practice so that we can be prepared when it happens. So I grabbed the AK, I grabbed the bag or whatever. And in the dream, you know, like in dreams, right? So in dreams, like your reality can switch. So one moment you can be in a hotel room, then the next moment you can be on the battlefield. Right. And so that's what happened. Like one moment we was in a hotel room. And then as I said that the the reality switched or augmented into a wolf, like a like a forest. And it was like a like a war scene, you know, like giving real. It was like giving like a dystopian, you know, like apocalyptic movie. So I'm running with the AK and I'm like, you know, I'm ready for some reason. I'm ready, you know, and then it switched back. To, but I'm by myself. So as I'm running with the AKM by myself, I got the hand warmers, I got the flashlight, but nobody that was in the conference room was with me. So I come back, like, I guess the dream switched me back to the conference room and everybody just sitting there looking complacent, you know, looking like, you know, like I ain't about to do that. You know, they seem scared too. Like they seem like they was nervous. And so I'm just like, I'm like, well, if we not getting raptured, then we got to prepare. Like y'all can't just sit here and just be like, be presumptuous like oh nothing gonna happen to us you know and then this one indian lady stood up out of the crowd and she just started walking and when she stood up for some reason i said this i said oh she ain't got nothing to worry about because she gonna get raptured and so when i said that the group started to have like a passive aggressiveness or attention towards the indian lady so i guess this is where it gets like kind of like uh um, prophetic. So the Indian lady say, she said, y'all never heard about the story of Cinderella? She's like, y'all never heard about the story of Esther? She was like, we are God's bride. And they just was real reluctant to listen to her, you know? And so I was like, I was like, yes, yes, yeah. I was like, yo, that, that, that's so true. I was like, that's so true. That's so true. Like, we don't have to prep for these things because we're preparing. Like, instead of prepping, for war, we're preparing for a wedding. And that's what the lady was saying. She was like, you don't know about Cinderella? You don't know about the bride? She was like, you don't know about Esther? And then she said, you don't know about Purim? That's what she said. She said, you don't know about Cinderella, Esther, the bride, or Purim? And it was an Indian lady. And so from the dream, I went into the restroom. And I was using the bathroom. And the guy next to me was using like his stall. And then we was washing our hands. And I was like, I was like, bro, you don't believe in the rapture? She was like, I mean... No, nah, I don't. But it seemed like he really wanted to, but it was just like, no, nah, I don't. And so I was like, why though? I was like, I was like, y'all didn't. I was like, so y'all don't want to prepare for anything, but y'all want to mock the Indian lady who was ready. Like y'all was jealous of the Indian lady who was ready for the rapture. Now, this is the interpretation I got, right? So this is where it gets crazy. So the fact is that I've been watching a lot of videos pertaining to the rapture that they talk about Esther and like the celestial signs. Bro, listen, I don't know nothing about them dates. I don't even know why I watch it. I like for real, for real I watch it not understanding nothing they saying, but I just watch it. Like, I don't know why. And so, but they always talk about Esther, you know, like, and I read the book of Esther. I, I personally don't understand how you can get a rapture connection through Esther because Esther seems like just a story with Mordecai and Haman and stuff like that. But when I went to church for the last couple Sundays, 
the pastor was like, this is my personal church in real life, right? The pastor like, oh yeah, today we talking about Esther. And I'm like, hold on, bro. Like, now mind you, we ain't doing no series on Esther's. Or no, it's just random. Like, oh, today we talking about Esther. I'm like, all right. So that was clue number one, right? Or I guess interpretation number one. Now, interpretation number two is this. Now, I'm going to keep it 100, right? Like, when I go to people rapture dreams, I read the comments. And like, it's always people who just be like, there's no rapture. There's no rapture. Like, it's always like, it's so funny. People who believe in the rapture, like the rapture is like the most hated doctrine, not only in the world, but also in the church. Like, and like, I always, I, I've always had this train of thought. Whatever is the most hated is probably the most true. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I just see so many people making fun of the rapture or there is no rapture. You need to prepare like, oh, people who believe in the rapture are scared of the tribulation. You need to prepare. Like, it's like this arrogance, like you a punk. You see what I'm saying? Like you scared. You want to run away from adversity or whatever. And so I see that. And sometimes I'll be commenting back and I always ask this question to the people in the comments. I say, how do we prepare for the seven year tribulation? And then, like, this is the contradicting part. They say, oh, no, like, you don't got to prepare because God going to protect us. But if God going to protect us, why do we need to go through it? Oh, but we need to go through it because we, we got to die. We got to get killed and martyred for our faith. But then when I say, so how do we prepare to not take the mark of the beast to, I guess, like, I guess, duck all those crazy seal judgments and trumpet judgments and bold judgment. Because mind you, the Bible never said in Revelation, oh, the church going to be spared through. If you read through the um, the seven seals, everyone getting everyone getting a piece of it, except for the 144 who are Jewish males, virgins, I believe, that are sealed. And then the Bible even say, like, the Antichrist is going to have power to overcome the saints. And then all the martyrs under the thing. So. I mean, all of the martyrs that's under the uh, under the altar crying out. So I guess there's I've always seen a contradiction with people who like mock the rapture. They mock the rapture and they say, well, you're not tough enough to go through the tribulation. But then when you ask them how to prep, they really don't have no answer because there's no way you can survive through the tribulation. So then they go back to say, oh, well, we're going to be protected through it. So but it don't make sense, because if we're going to be protected through it, why wouldn't Jesus just take us out of it? Right. And then they have no verse to back up that we be protected through it because it literally says that the Antichrist is going to kill us. Like, you know, like we're going to get beheaded. And and if you don't get beheaded, you might die from the nukes. You might die from the poisonous water. Like there's no real protection. And I mean, it's so and what's so funny is like it seems like people who mock the, the, the rapture, like it's like the, it's like it's never like an actual like um solid reason. It's just more of like this, like opinionated, like, oh, y'all scared. Oh, y'all just have an escapist mindset or the rapture is an American evangelical thing. And I'm like, bro, I've been to the Philippines and people talk about the rapture. I lived in Jamaica for a year and they talked about the Lord's coming. So it's like, it's like, can we get an actual, like, um, can we get an actual, like real substantial argument against the rapture except for just like, oh, you scared or the people that uh, believe in a rapture are going to fall away. Like just these like presumptuous opinions that's not coming from any p facts, you know? So I hope I didn't lose anybody in that. But I just say that to say, like, the tension in my dream from the lady who got up and walked out, it was like she believed in it. And then, like, as she saw the confusion, she it was like the Holy Spirit probably spoke to her in the dream. It was like, you don't have to worry about this. You can just get up, go, you know, and prepare to be a bride. And when she did it, you can tell that they was, like, upset about it. You see what I'm saying? So that was the dream. And then, um, oh, and the last thing is, so I'm scrolling on YouTube and then there's an Indian lady, right? And I'm going to pin her name to the top of the uh, comments. But there was an Indian lady who literally was talking about a rapture dream she had. And, I, and then like, and so this is how you know when God is like speaking through you, right? Or speaking to you. So I forgot. About, I didn't forget about this. I remember the dream, but I, I didn't think too much about posting it. But when I saw the Indian lady, it was like instantly like. The Indian lady in the dream popped up. So I watched it. I even watched the whole thing. I was just like, this her, this her. I commented on it. She responded. And then I was like, all right, I got to make this video now. So I guess I say, y'all, let's just say this. Like, man, look, bro. Like, ain't nobody. Like, I grew up in. I, I'm from. The, I don't like to boast about this, but I grew up in Southeast Washington, D.C. Like, that's hood. You know, hood. Like, I grew up in the trenches. Ain't nobody scared of no tribulation. Like, I like, man, 
Bro, the people that's looking for the rapture, most of us been through so much, like, the tribulation will move us. Like, ain't nobody scared of death. So it's like, you know why you look, you know why I'm waiting for the rapture? Because I'm tired of, like, living in this body of sin. It has nothing to do with escaping, bro. Like, look, I be, like, I be, like, like, I, there's another side of me that be like, bro, I wish somebody would. I would love to be in a tribulation. Like, because if somebody even think about touching me, I'm, I'm going out. Like, you see what I'm saying? I want, I want, I love that, like, war heroes type stuff. So it's like, don't ever think that, like, just because somebody believe in a rapture that they some sort of punk or they some, they some, like, they like, they a punk, bro. Like, you know, they, they scared. Like, it ain't, like, once of, like, first off, that's a presumptuous opinion. And second of all, most of these people been through so many things, they ain't scared of nothing. Like, we ain't got to be scared of nothing. So even if we was to be left in a tribulation, like, it's nothing. We can go to war any day, and I get to die and go to heaven. So, I get to die heroic death and go to heaven. Like, death don't scare nobody, especially when you stand enough for something. But, um, it's like, man, we want the rapture because we try and get up out of this body of sin. Like, and I guess I can get personal too. Like, the Lord revealed the rapture to me in 2022, right? So, you know, I'm all on my Instagram. I'm like, bro, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Little do I know, it's been hell for me, bro. Like, I mean, Satan been on my head. You know, it seemed like early since I started watching, like I've been more obedient too. like the rapture helped me like give up my, my, uh, I don't know if you two going to strike me for this, but I, you know, I struggle with lust, particularly looking at explicit videos. I don't want to say the other word cause they might, you know, strike it up. Y'all know what I'm talking about, bro. I'd be looking at the explicit videos and say like, so when the rapture dreams came to me in 2022, like, like. Like my whole, I, I didn't been, I've been doing so much better, y'all. I'm talking about, it went from like 80% to like 30%, you know, which is 50% and that's good, but it's still like that 30% I want to be gone. You know, there's still residue of sin. And it's like, that's really the reason why we try and get up out of here. You know, like I'm in school right now for cybersecurity. Like they like, oh, you're going to make six figures and all that. But I'm like, deep down, like, bro, I don't care. I'm trying to go home. Like, but I still got to take care of my family. I still got to, like, I don't see no future here. Like, so it's like when you, when you, like, like, it's like, stop thinking people want the rapture because they want to escape the tribulation. We already in tribulation. It's people out here losing their big kids. They, they husbands, they wives. It's people already dealing with that. Like, please stop making that presumptuous opinion. Like, oh, we just want to escape. Escape what? We here. Like, bro, you can die any day. It don't matter. Like, even though we not in the tribulation, it's still people getting killed every day like they just shot up joe osteen church so it's like let's stop making this like this thing of like nobody's scared bro nobody's scared bro nobody's scared bro at all the only thing i'm scared of is keep disobeying god the only thing i'm scared of is when i get off my knees and pray I get a call saying that I got pre-diabetes because I know and because I, I know Satan trying to like attack me every single. That's what I'm scared of, bro. I'm scared of my little eight month old baby growing up in this evil world. I ain't scared of no tribulation, bro. We already here in a sense. So that I mean like that. I mean, and I. This is why I hate making videos, but I, it just it's just. Like, if you don't believe in a rapture, bro, then don't believe. Like, but stop mocking and, like, bothering people that do. If you notice, you don't see people that believe in a rapture antagonizing people that don't believe in a rapture. Because we ain't focused on that. Just like the Indian lady in the dream. We so focused on, I, right, bro, I'm the... If I'm Cinderella, that, like she said in the dream, well, if I'm Esther, like, I ain't got time. Like, if you getting married, you ain't got time arguing with ex-girlfriends. I'm the one getting married. Well, it's like the people, it's like, it's like people who don't believe in the rapture. It's like they have to hold their belief based on mocking the other people. Like if you don't, like if I truly didn't believe in the rapture, I would get some guns. I would move out deep somewhere and I'll just prepare, bro. Like I wouldn't spend all my time like, well, let me see what the, the people that believe in the rapture are talking about. So I can try to disprove them to make me feel more confident that there's not a rapture because deep down I want it to be a rapture, but it might not be happening in the time frame that I wanted to, so therefore I'm going to start mocking other people. So yeah, that's that's the dream. Oh, and then the last thing I want to say, the Cinderella part, right? When she said Cinderella, right? So I was watching a video that I probably shouldn't have been watching. Not like not not an illicit video, not an illicit, you know, sexual video or nothing like that, but I was just watching this video of a lady talking. And uh, 
she was definitely secular, but she said she was talking about the story of Cinderella. I was watching it today, actually. And she was like, if, if you know about Cinderella, the other sisters was jealous of Cinderella and they was trying to fit in her shoe. But they was like, I guess the story of Cinderella is about jealousy and somebody jealous because somebody else is the, the, the bride and they not. And it just made me think of like, once again, like people that don't believe in the rapture always want to come and antagonize people that do. You know, like that's they that's their whole premise of not believing in the rapture. Their whole premise is let me antagonize those who do. It's never just like a hey, we just don't believe in the rapture. We're prepping as a church. We're doing this and that. Hence the the dream. I'm like, yo, I got the tools out for y'all. I got the blueprint. We just gotta practice. Nobody wanted to practice, so um, that's the dream I had. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a pen to chat with the uh, with the lady, her dream in there, and um. I guess, man, just, I guess my only thing to say is like, just walking your calling, you know, like, look, God, I mean, just, just do anything for God. Like even yesterday I was walking, I was walking up to the steps of my house and my neighbor said, can you help me uh, bring my couch upstairs? Man, I go, I'm like, all right, sure. I go in there, big old 200 pound couch. We, we breaking down his walls and I'm like, and God just like, these are the little things I want you to do. So, you know, like. I always be like, God, I'm not doing enough. Like, and then you do something and then you're like, yes, I'm doing what I need to do. And then two weeks later, like, I ain't doing enough. I ain't, you ain't going to never do enough because Christ did it all for us. But just some little things, you know, like you might not have the boldness to get out on the, 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 the street and preach or walk straight up to somebody and say repent. But you might have the boldness to be like, hey, bro, I got $10 to my name. This dude asking for five. I need that five. But I'm going to trust God for the 10, for another 10 or for 20. So I'm going to give him the five. You know, or I'm going to tell you something else that God appreciates. So it'd be some nights, right? Where like, I want to watch those explicit videos. Not even because I'm not even because like my pleasure hormones are like moving up and moving up and down in me just because like I'd be so stressed out, bro. I'm a father. I'm a husband. You know, I take care of everything in the house, you know, like, and then I got all these other problems like the pre-diabetes call. Like, I mean, I'd be having a lot of stress, you know, and it's funny because like, Satan don't tempt me with, oh, go smoke some marijuana or go punch a hole in the wall or go drink some liquor. It's always the same temptation. Go watch those videos. Right. And then like I say, I say, you know what, Satan, I'm not going to do it. And then and you know how you know, you know how Satan work. I say no to Satan. I pray. And then I stay up all night. It's like it's almost like your body gets it's almost like your physical body gets upset that you're not giving it the pleasure it wants. So then it it causes you to be uncomfortable. And then it's like, I'm getting all upset. I got these random, like, just irritational, like, vibes in my body because I'm saying no to sin. And, you know, God's saying, like, you trust in me in the moment of uncomfort. And so I just want to encourage anybody, like, when you say no to weed or, or explicit videos or texting that person to go, you know, whatever, or marijuana, it ain't, it ain't your, it ain't, but, then, but then when you say no to it, it seems like your life getting worse and you still saying no. And sometimes you might be like, dang, God, are you being unfair to me? Are you trying to force me to do this? But you still saying no. That's 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 that has a heavy weight in the kingdom, too. So just remember that, bro. Like when you say no to something, look, look, even if you say no the first two days and you mess up on the third day, them two days, God is looking at. He ain't worried about the third day. He ain't worried, he worried about them two days. And I'm telling myself that. So um, I had a rapture dream. And God love y'all.